everybody, it is Wednesday! Who is joining us tonight? Let's see if we've got this working now. Who is with us? Dana's with us! Jennifer's in there! Hello, Jennifer! How are ya? Sorry I'm late. Kitty's with us. Lots of technical problems. Facebook updated. What do you want from me? <laughs> Facebook did an update tonight and threw us all off. So we have had to uh, change things up to get it all working. Hello Adele and Dazzle. Great to have you with us. Great to have everybody here. Glad to have, hey Cindy, good to have you with us tonight. Happy Wednesday, Stella. Hey Michelle in Virginia. Oops, hang on a second here. Do I still have my sound, everybody? I think I still have my sound. Give me a like if, I still, if you're still hearing me. I think you are. Happy Wednesday, Heidi, and Pat and the Peanut Gallery are here. So all is well in Florida. I've got my Florida people here. Suki, great to have you in Texas. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it's weird. We were doing fine. We went to go live, and uh, on the uh, tablet, uh, Facebook changed the whole settings. Completely different than it was yesterday. Completely different than it was earlier and completely different than what it is on my phone. So, uh, totally messed with us here at the, uh, at the 11th hour, for lack of a better term, or 12th hour, I guess. Asheville Angie's with us. I guess that's a better way to, to, to keep our Angie straight. Asheville Angie and Nebraska Angie. Jeremy Davis is with us. Hey, Rick is with us. Hopefully another great sales day in South Carolina. And uh, things are good there. Tasha, Trisha, great to have you with us. Great to have everybody with us tonight. Asheville Angie, I like that. I like that a lot. And Diane in Georgia. Good to have you with us, Diane. I'm glad everybody was still able to join us. Hey, Alexa, good to have you with us. It is so great to have everybody here tonight. I'm, I'm very excited. Joanne in Chicago. Russ, I hope you're on the treadmill. I forgot to check with you first, but I hope you are on the treadmill getting your steps in tonight. That is, that is what I am hoping tonight. Well, they're not rules yet. They're close. They're very, very close. The new PPP rules are close, and we will talk about it tonight, I promise you. Hanging shelves, Russ. All right. Well, we don't need any injuries tonight, so, so uh, measure twice, cut once, or something like that. I, I know there's some uh, technical way of, of doing that, but it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, not, it's not cut twice, measure once or something. I don't know. So, um, yeah, a lot of good stuff going on. A lot of good stuff uh, happening as we, uh, we come on the air tonight. So, a um, lot of... Lot of uh, sorting through stuff, um, but it's, it's going to be good because everything's following the, the house plan. Hey, Krita, how are you? Good to have you with us. Good to have you with us tonight. Yay, Alexa. Well, there is something to be grateful for. So that'll start off our grateful uh, tack for tonight. So tell us, everybody, what are you grateful for this Wednesday? I'm grateful, I guess, that it's Wednesday. I said it was Tuesday. When I was originally trying to go live, I'm like, why are you typing Wednesday? Let's type Tuesday. So it is Wednesday, people. Jerry is joining us from the closet. Not the same closet that Russ is trying to hang shelves in, but, you know, you never know. 
Good to have you with us, Jerry. What is everybody grateful for? And Jennifer Dodds has joined us from Orlando. And Carrie, great to have you with us. Great to have you with us. The curfew's over in Reno. Reno's not a city that's good for, for uh, curfew, so I'm glad to hear that. I am so glad. When I heard from Laurel last night um, that everything was great, uh, so yes, I am thrilled that Laurel is doing well and, and is recovering well. That is great, Dana. That is awesome news that you received that grant. What one one uh, one piece of th knowledge to stick in the back is that um, that grant may be considered taxable income at the end of the year. Um, this year may not be a big deal to have to worry about taxable income, but uh, you know, uh, depending on who issued the grant and everything, it's likely to be taxed for federal purposes. So when you get a 1099 in January, I just don't want you to be surprised about it. It's still free money, even if you have to pay taxes on it. God bless. Um, it, it's a grateful thing, especially with all the loans that businesses are being offered. To be offered a grant is truly uh, uh, a good thing. Wow, Trisha, that is awesome. Best month in eight years. Best month in eight years. Eight years, people. Boom. Drop the mic on that one. Drop it. Oh, that is great, Trish. I am so excited for you. Sylvia is joining us tonight. Lots of buyouts coming in today, which means lots of future sales, Kitty. Great to have you with us, Sylvia. Awesome that you're here. Really awesome that you're here. So that is wonderful. I'm so excited for everybody tonight. I'm, I love all this good news. All this good news is awesome. I mean, that would make my friend Laura and I r raise our glasses and say cheers. And cheers to you all. Hey, however the register rings, the register brings its own joy. You know, we call them Jewish Christmas bells. It, it is what a register is, Jennifer, and, uh, you know, that is, that is a wonderful thing. And I didn't get that just because I used to always have to work Christmas in my father's pharmacy. Although we rang up a lot of sales on Christmas Day. People coming in and buying Whitman samplers, batteries, and film was the things that we used to sell on Christmas Day when we were open. Hey, Karen, great to have you with us. And cheers to you, Tricia. You got a lot to cheer. You got a lot of cheer there. Most people don't want to look at their May sales, and you had the best May in eight years, Trisha. That's awesome. That's true, Russell. That is really awesome. Uh, all the uh, international protests that are taking place in honor of our domestic issues and, and things. And I have a few comments on that. I actually have several uh, different things to talk about with that tonight. We got a busy night, so let's get started, people. Every night, every night we start with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start the night. What do we got here? Oh, I got glasses. I need glasses, people. I'm not used to my new set. So they, they, because I don't have the big camera, just so you can see my, my new set is getting wider. And if I had my... Uh, uh, the other camera, um, which will work because we don't have to count on Facebook for that. Onward and upward. That's right, Alexa. Onward and upward. And that's why we go to our Good Morning, Good Night book. Let's see what we got going here. Good morning. Inertia is a hell of a drug. If you've been going nonstop, be an object at rest. If you've been at rest too long, go in, get in motion. Don't rely on an external force. Kick inertia in the grundle. Let's go. And with that, let's get tonight's uh, topic started. Let's see what I got going on here. I got a big pile here tonight. 
I like this. Um, so, you know, at, tomorrow is my big debut, Alexa. Uh, I, or in Diane. Yes, tomorrow is my big debut. Um, but the best days are ahead of us, everybody. The best is yet to come. The best days are not behind us. The best are ahead of us. Trisha just told us that her best month in eight years. So the best is ahead of us. Yeah, I know mine was bad. I don't even need to, to compare it to a prior. Uh, I am on tomorrow. I am on Eastern Time. I am on HSN at 1.55 p.m. and 10.55. QVC, I'm on at 12 p.m. and uh, 9 p.m. I do not think I will be drinking during the filming. Um, although I am on with David tomorrow night on QVC and he does down home cooking and stuff. So maybe that would be okay if I were cooking and drinking. I don't know, but I'm guessing I'm going to skip the scotch tomorrow night. At least until, well, probably all together because my last taping is at uh, 10.55 at night Eastern. Uh, hey, Marsha, good to have you with us tonight. So as Russell said, you know, what am I selling? I'm selling resale. I'm selling a better tomorrow for small business. I'm selling the best days are ahead of us. Uh, so this was, a, this was a great quote, okay, uh, that I got today. So we're dealing in this country, we're dealing in this country with two viruses. America's dealing with two viruses. COVID-19, which is new, and racism, which is not. There's no vaccine for either. But we must continue to work toward a cure for both. While in the midst of a pandemic, we have been confronted with some ugly facts about race in America. But we can't let either deter us from what we're working toward. An America that embraces all people and supports all in, in achieving their goals. And I thought that was a great, uh, a great look at things. So, um, it, you know, I, I've got several things in here on that tonight, on that topic, because it is so important. Um, Laurel's joining us! Yay, Laurel! So glad to have you here tonight, uh, Laurel, and so glad you're feeling well enough to join us. That must be Nurse Ben. Uh, getting you back uh, to, to speed here. So, uh, so glad to have you with us. Um, everybody, if you have not done it already, the link is in the NARTS Facebook group for the Industry Insights, the statistical company that formulates our operating survey has a fourth and final COVID-19 impact and implementation survey to help businesses understand the overall sentiment and action plans of their peers and to help you during this global pandemic. The research is being conducted across all industry types and there's no fee to be part of this study. It only takes a few minutes, people. Go to the NARTS Facebook page, find the link. It's right in there, easy to find. Search for Industry Insights if there's been a lot of posts today and, and, uh, and it takes something to get to. Just get to it, do it, it'll only take you a couple minutes. The deadline to participate is this Friday, two days away at noon, and we will post the results when they are available. I promise you that. Medical, and to make you laugh, you know, as Laurel is recuperating and, and Nana's recuperating, um, to make you laugh today, medical experts were asked if it's time to le ease the lockdown. Allergists were in favor of scratching it, but dermatologists advised not to make any rash moves. Gastroenterologists had sort of a gut feeling about it, but neurologists thought the government had a lot of nerve. Obstetricians felt certain everyone was laboring under a misconception, while ophthalmologists considered the idea short-sighted. Many pathologists yelled, over my dead body, while pedi pediatricians said, oh, grow up. Psychiatrists thought the whole idea was madness, while radiologists could see right through it. Surgeons decided to wash their hands of the whole thing, and pharmacists claimed it would be a bitter pill to swallow. Plastic surgeons' uh, opinion that this would proposal would put a whole new face on the matter, while podiatrists thought it was a step forward. 
but urologists were pissed off at the whole idea. Anesthesiologists thought the whole idea was, ga was a gas, and those lofty cardiologists didn't have the heart to say no. In the end, the proctologist went out, leaving the entire decision up to the you-know-what. <laughs> There's just to make you laugh a little bit today. We need to laugh. Our advocacy affirmations of the week is gratitude. Okay, our quote of the week, thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. Thankfulness may consist merely of words. Gratitude is shown in acts. Brands standing by their statements. <laughs> uh, where retailers hope to welcome back customers, now they're sweeping broken glass and boarding up w windows. Uh, largely peaceful protests against systemic racism spurred after Minneapolis police killed George Floyd last week are still ongoing. Um, during and after some of the demonstration, people have looted stores. Um, Retails focused on the bigger picture. Uh, tapestry, right? This is tapestry. Uh, tapestry said, we can replace our windows and our handbags, but we cannot bring back George Floyd and a host of others, Trayvon Martin, Eric Gardner, Emmett Till, and too many others. Each of these lives matter. Gucci, H&M, and Nordstrom released statements supporting anti-racism protests after their stores were raided. Most large retailers have the resources to rebuild damaged stores after, even with the COVID-19 setbacks. It's the small independent brands that will have a harder time recovering. Um, and mainly because the insurance that they have. So one of the things that, that was really noted in the difference between business insurance right now. Hey, Julie Jankowitz. Hey, Bailey. Is that most small businesses are underinsured. Okay, so if, if that, yes, they have insurance, but they don't have enough to replace uh, the cost of this if, if their stores were damaged in, in, in the riots and demonstrations. And that's a real important factor. I meet at least annually with my insurance agent or at any time when we change something major in our business. So it's important to meet with your insurance agent regularly to cover things like this and to make sure that your values are keeping up with the inventory. I mean, Julie would be a perfect example. Julie expanded into another store, but she also expanded into higher product lines that cost more. So it'd be a good example and a good time if she hasn't already met with her insurance agent to discuss the higher inventory values that she has in her store should she experience a break-in. News reports are saying LVMH is reconsidering its acquisition of Tiffany. Um, they had a meeting in Paris Tuesday night specifically to discuss the deal amid a deteriorating situation in the U.S. market. Port said that board members were concerned about a number of factors ranging from the economic impact of COVID-19 to growing social unrest to Tiffany's ability to cover all its debt covenants at the end of the transaction, which was the year. So it is up in the air whether that deal will still go through. I gotta put some of this stuff down. I, I am not used to my new set. My new set, and I'm on a different camera tonight, but I'll be on my bigger camera tomorrow, you know, is, I'm just not used to it, folks. Build-A-Bear workshop turned around, is stalled by COVID-19. Build-A-Bear is an experience, okay? And it, and it transgresses age, okay? Even Rebecca loves to go to Build-A-Bear, okay? And have the experience of Build-A-Bear and build her bear. This is something that can't be replicated online, okay? Loves to go there. That's so smart, Julie. That's great to hear that you have separate insurance policies on both. But Build-A-Bear is hurting because of the lack of experience, the lack of parties that are happening, the lack of people uh, being able to open its stores. So um, it, it is interesting that that business isn't translating well online. Um, but they were doing well in their recovery, and their redesigned stores were doing really, really well. Um, and uh, while they have had a digital demand, it hasn't been nearly what they see in their stores, um, and that's because of the experience. Hey, Anita and Shannon, great to have you with us. 
Decathlon Sports turns its stores into fulfillment centers. The world's largest sporting good retailer is keeping its U.S. stores in the game during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, based in France, Decathlon operates uh, U.S. Uh, brick and mortar stores in the Bay Area and California. After closing its store in the wake of COVID-19, Decathlon saw a spike in its e-commerce business as mower consumers shop for sports equipment and apparel for at-home use. Uh, production in disruptions in China put a strain on warehouse supply. Had to mow before the rain, Kelly. That's okay. It's, we're glad to have you any... Uh, um, uh, Anytime you can join us. It took two weeks for Decathlon to roll out a new store fulfillment system. Now customers can call ahead or place an order online and drive up to the store and interact with the associates. Um, again, it's all about meeting the customer where they are. If you can't, if they can't come to you, how do you meet them? And, and it's the same with Dick's Sporting Goods. They're, they have swung to a loss, but online sales surge and they see improving conditions for quarter two. Um, they swung to a first quarter loss as closed stores took big toll on sales. The company says, said it sees progressive recovery, recovery in early second quarter sales, which is good. This is good news for all of us because this is what we're all going to be headed towards as, as we work to recovery. So knowing what's happening with the big guys allows us a path to follow. It paints a path for us. Um, their sales fell 30.6%. Um, and I think that's a little misleading. And, and I say that because they also stopped a lot of their gun sales and things. So that, that is a little misleading with dicks. Um, but their online sales jumped 110%, fueled by their launch of uh, curbside contactless pickup and um, e-commerce uh, accounted for approximately 39% of the chain's total first quarter net sales compared to 13% a year uh, I go. It is available on the website. Are you talking, which bag do you like in the background? The Dooney bag, this one? The Dooney bag is, is, is a steal. The Dooney bag is $65. The Cole Haan bag, I don't know where the tag is on that. The Cole Haan is uh, $66. Uh, no, it's on sale, $55. Available at ecistores.com, I'm just saying. You can buy it before it's on QVC. The turquoise white and white one. Yeah, that is $65. It's a Dooney. You can find it right on our website. Nearly half of consumers, according to a survey, are, re are ready to shop in store this week. I'm going to cover that some more later because I have a much better report than that news report on it. I have a much better in-depth survey to talk about. City Furniture is expanding and hiring. The Florida-based City Furniture is continuing with its growth plan. Um, the retailer plans to open two more locations in the coming uh, months, including a store in North Miami. And it plans to open a 133,000 square foot store in Altamonte Springs, Florida. Um, and it's hiring 175 people in new positions in e-commerce, IT, and analytics and sales. Um, as they reopen, they are seeing a surge in business. And that is, again, good for all of us. Good for all of us. Um, we've talked about the Fed's Main Street program, which isn't what most of us think as a Main Street program. It's really meant for the uh, big uh, $100 million companies and more. The $600 billion program is having lots of problems with people um, getting to um, uh, into it because of uh, cost, uh, complexity of paperwork, um, and uh, the terms of the loan. The general feeling is that it's too late and not enough. Um, and they're really echoing a lot of the PPP issues. Altamont. Okay, well, I want to add the E. You know, that's what I'm the northerner. Thank you, Data. <laughs> hey, Kirsty joined us tonight. Cheers, Kirsty. Thirsty Kirsty. Cheers. Good to have you with us tonight. Great to see you. Um. 
Private payrolls declined by 2.76 million in May. Why is that a good thing? Why is that a good thing that we declined 2.76 million in May? It is a good thing. It is a good thing because people that were expecting private payrolls to drop by over 8.5 million in May. So economists were predicting a much bigger drop, and ADP and others are reporting a much uh, smaller drop. So that the recovery is underway is, is showing signs of recovery. Again, this is a good thing for the overall economy. Um, and that, uh, you know, payrolls are going to start heading potentially in the right direction again instead of in the hole. Apparel seller Retail Wins said in a security filing, Retail Wins is, uh, they are, who are, I just want to make sure I don't screw this up. Which, what's the real company? Uh, oh, yeah, New York and Company. New, uh, they own New York and Company, among others, is likely in default on a loan agreement with our favorite bank, Wells Fargo. Uh, though it has not received yet received a notice from the bank. Um, if the borrowing under the loan agreement is reduced, the company said it has no other credit facilities to turn to and would have to seek bankruptcy. So uh, it looks like our friends at Wells Fargo well, and the realities of the economy are going to send them into bankruptcy. From shipments to cash flow, pandemic uncertainty makes reopening harder. If only it were as easy as unlocking the door. With states gradually lifting restrictions on businesses and residents put in place in response to COVID-19, the retailers that moved to shut down their store fleets in March have been gradually reopening in phases, often with traffic restrictions and other new health protocols. But there was no precedent for the closures and the public health crisis surrounding them, so there can be no certainty or anything close to it around the recovery either. Uh, Credit Suisse analysts have said that um, they expect widely varying results as stores start to reopen. While there was real evidence of strong sales and pent-up demand in some categories on reopening, he also notes those, change, those trends could change quickly given that stores were reopening to recessionary economy and risks from the virus remain. And as we covered yesterday, um, Predictions into the future right now are, you know, worse than throwing a dart uh, at a dartboard. Um, but one of the things they've said, and this is something I've said to the, since the beginning, is liquidity is still key. Okay, hanging on to cash, managing your cash reserves is, is the key to long-term Okay, and, and that is a key important part there. Um, so don't have irrational exuberance as things uh, pick up. But, uh, you know, be there with it as we do and, and manage cash and spending uh, appropriately. Do, 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 do. Uh, GNC has a big uh, loan payment due June 15th, which will uh, likely trigger it into bankruptcy. Okay. Hey, Joni, great to have you with us tonight. GNC has a lot of stores. Okay, what's their, does it tell me their store count here? 5,200 retail locations throughout the U.S. and 1,600 in-store Rite Aid, store within a store locations. Um, so they, they're facing a lot of headwinds as their, um, the Pittsburgh-based uh, company they they're totaling nearly uh, 900 million dollars in debt at the end of the first quarter and uh they're trying uh to uh restructure their debt but we'll see it's a interesting market out there and especially for their fixed costs with 5200 stores plus the store within a stores in Rite Aid um which was a good way for them to grow okay the store within the store I'll give them credit for that um McDonald franchisees put the pressure on McDonald's to make the smaller menu permanent. 
So McDonald's has streamlined their menu as part of um, their response to COVID-19 and keeping their operations going. As part of that, they have also seen, and this is something we have talked about in our own businesses, they have seen huge surges in efficiency. Times um, that they've been able to get product to customer in, in record time, keeping the lines moving, the amount of product they've been handling with a streamlined menu like they've never seen before. And franchisees, the Franchisee Association for McDonald's, put pressure on them, and McDonald's agreed to keep the new streamlined menu, okay? And which is very interesting all the way around from a business perspective, from a efficiency perspective, from the power of the franchisee, okay, which usually it's corporate down telling the franchisee what they're going to do, okay? And so a, a more narrow menu selection, but it's really getting back to the roots. Who do you serve? Okay, what products do you have to serve them and how can you provide it to them in the mo best, most efficient way possible? Isn't that what we're talking about in our stores? Okay, how do we serve them in the best, most efficient way possible in these changing times? How do we help them do that better? How do we get more efficient with our websites? We've start, ev you know, everybody here has started a new website through this. With your stores reopening, how do you keep that level of, how do you run that efficiently now that you're running another store, essentially? So these are key important terms and it's being streamlined, okay? And, and there's a lot to learn from McDonald's about that and streamlining. McDonald's really gets, okay, um, you know, running an efficient business. I mean, I've talked about that before with Starbucks, okay? I've spent all day in Starbucks just watching their process, okay? Watching how they don't take uh, to do. That's awesome, Russ. Yeah, a breakfast burrito in 60 seconds, you know? Did you bring one for everyone in the office? I'm just asking, asking for a friend. Billy wants to know. He didn't know you were stopping. It, it's, uh, it, it's real important though that you keep that up. And you were doing a lot of nice stuff with flat lays, Diane, but it's speed, okay? You can't spend, especially like in kids clothes, Diane, you can't spend too much time on it, okay? It, and I've had a lot of people reach out to me on the new system that we're using for pictures and, and things where we're getting, you know, tons of items up on our website every day, but we're not spending any time on it. And I'm going to do a video of what we're doing uh, in the coming weeks. Ooh, green chili breakfast burrito. That sounds good. I like that. <laughs> you work for McDonald's. Hey, but look at all the skills you gain by working at McDonald's, Edwin. Okay, McDonald's teaches America's workforce. I loved when we had a uh, seminar at McDonald's headquarters, okay, and we were renting the, uh, the space there and we were at the hotel right at uh, McDonald's headquarters. That was great. It was a tremendous looking, working experience uh, walking through their headquarters, okay, but just all the skills. They, they can teach you so much, so learn from the big guys. I tell all these stories about what the big guys are doing because you can scale it down to your world, okay? You just have to comprehend it a little bit. You just have to step back with the idea. Take one idea and just step back a little bit, okay? And downsize it to your world, okay? That, that is what you need to do to be, apply these skills so you can continue to run your website efficiently, so you can continue to run your store, so you can continue to offer curbside pickup, so you can continue to ship orders. These are important things for the future growth of your business because again, we have to grow our way out of this. The only way out of this, okay? The Congressional Budget Office says it's gonna take 10 years to recover. No, you don't have 10 years, okay? You gotta recover and, and be earning money every day, okay, as you reopen and as business returns, okay? It has to be profitable business. You have to be running uh, efficiently to be able to do that. So these are important, important things. Uh, the pandemic has forced Nordstrom, our friends over at Nordstrom, to invest more in its off-price e-commerce business. Um, Nordstrom has been very slow to put any money into doing um, e-commerce for the rack. 
and uh, most of its sales still come from the rack's physical stores. Uh, um, and, and much like their off -price, other off-price competitors, TJX and Burlington stores, they are not doing very much online, but they are trying to shift because as the pandemic has forced them to close, what do they do? Okay, where you have to go where your customers are. If your can't, customers can't come to you, you have to go to where your customers are. Just like I can't be here with you. I can't be with you. I can't be in a room with all of you people. So I come to you here every night. Every night. Even Miss Pasadena is every night. Starbucks. Back to something I can enjoy and do like. Starbucks is offering coronavirus leave of absence program for employees with reduced hours. So this is interesting, okay? They're trying to market this, and I'm not buying it. And I like Starbucks. I really do. And I think overall they're a great company with lots of efficiency and everything else. But they're letting, they're offering employees to take leave, take unemployment, okay, take the extra $600, and uh, return by September 30th, okay? And be on unpaid leave of absence from Starbucks as Starbucks is reducing hours uh, for associates. Um, so leaving hours for the people that are still around and, uh, and things. So that is an interesting approach. I'm not... I'm with it. It's partly, you know, keeping some people on. You know, it is a issue with benefits. They're cutting their costs. It, it, I, I'm, I'm in a loss on there where, where I fall on that. I don't like that they're shoving everybody off to government programs, but I like that they are, um, you know, uh, trying to keep people as part of the company. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. They're trying to do it as a marketing good thing. I am uh, not there. Flipping back to the uh, George Floyd, another quote here. You're trying to manage your life, manage your family, manage your business, and figure out how to be a human being at such a high density moment. And that's uh, what a lot of us are dealing with as we try to um, figure out how to respond to things and whether we should respond or post something or not post something. Um, it, it is a very, uh, it's a difficult choices. And I know everybody is grappling with that. Our buddies at Google, Google. I know this will, this will shock my, my technical friends that have joined us tonight. I, I, I'm glad Russ is sitting down. Yeah, it does feel wrong about the Starbucks thing. They're trying to paint it as good and giving and thus giving more hours to others. So I yeah, but I feel wrong about it too. I'm not in love with it. And I like Starbucks, but I'm not in love with it. I'm not and I even uh, you know, heard the CEO being interviewed about it and I still wasn't in love with it. And then I read the whole detail and I really wasn't in love with it. Um, you know, it's sort of like when Walmart was accused of helping employees fill out uh, applications for food stamps. Well, you qualify for food stamps. Let me help you get them. I wasn't a fan of that either. Okay, that didn't make them a good employer that they helped their employee get food stamps. I didn't feel good about that. Um, Google faces a $5 billion lawsuit in the U.S. for tracking private internet use. I know this will come as a shock, but there um, is a proposed class action accusing the internet search company of illegal inva Ill illegally invading the privacy of millions of users by pervasively tracking their internet use through browsers set in private mode or incognito mode, okay? You know, everything on the internet is tracked. There's always a way to track it. So I'm not surprised by it. I guess, you know, I'm more surprised that some lawyer took up the lawsuit on it. Let's get into some of this other stuff here.
Consumer Attitude, the National Retail Federation's survey on consumer attitudes towards store reopenings and shopping. In May, only 13% uh, expected stores to be open. Uh, in June, that jumps to 34%, and July or later, that jumps to 51%. 47% of consumers feel comfortable with the idea of shopping. 94% of all consumers say that stores need to at least have some health or safety measures in place to ensure they feel comfortable shopping again. The top health and, safe, uh, health and safety measures require employees to wear protective gear such as masks and or gloves, enforce social distancing while shopping, conduct regular cleanings, provide hand sanitizer or hand washing stations at the store, uh, and have employee cleaning services throughout the day. I actually uh, scored huge hand sanitizer um, things at CVS today when I had to pick up Nana's uh, prescription. Um, having employees wear personal protective equipment has become more important to consumers in early May Shoppers ranked it as the third most important health measure to them. By the end of the month, it moved to number one. Number one uh, by the end of the month. Um, percent of people who have done the following as the result of the pandemic. Bought something online to pick it up in store. 36% more than once. Used a contactless payment method. 35% more than once. Uh, used a delivery service, example, Instacart, 31%. Uh, approximately half of consumers say they've used buy online, pick up in store, 54%, um, as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. This full survey, all the details, all the details will be posted to the NARC's private Facebook group later tonight. Later tonight, that'll be available to you, and it will... Go to narts.org, narts.org slash resale strong by tomorrow at noon, including this video will be there. Narts.org slash resale strong will be there. Um, that uh, survey from the National Retail Federation, which has lots of great information in it, as well as this video um, goes to narts.org slash resale strong for us to share with all our friends in retail because it's about getting everybody, everybody to the other side of this. We want everybody to go to the other side. And if you haven't picked it up yet, if you haven't dug in your mailbox, the NARTS newsletter. NARTS newsletter for June is out. It's in your mailbox. Check it. If you haven't seen it in your mailbox, open up your mailbox. It's there. It is chock full of great articles. That Neil guy wrote an article, You've Come a Long Way, Baby. Hang on. It's got thick art. What else do we got in here? Dennis talked about pivoting. Chris talked about songs. Kevin talked about his amazing donation drive. And um, Julie got back to the basics. And uh, Patty asked us, who are you? Some really, really phenomenal stuff in this newsletter. I thought there was oh, and Angie talks about perception. Angie Hulus. And Nebraska Angie, as she is now known. And most importantly, most importantly, right on the cover, right on the cover, we talk about resale, reunite. The NARTS virtual conference coming this August. Virtual conference right from the comfort of your store, your home, your easy chair you're going to be able to join the NARTS virtual conference at an unbelievable rate. Only $199. $199 you're going to be able to join. It covers it right on the uh, cover of the NARTS newsletter, and you'll be able to register very, very soon right at NARTS.org. You'll be able to register. $199. And you're going to be able to get so much. It's really, uh, really honored for all that everybody has put together for this conference. So much work has gone into putting uh, and pivoting so that we can offer a virtual conference. So I'm, I'm so excited about it. And, and uh, but it will.
You are at the top of the stretch, Michelle. Hey, you read my article. <laughs> oh, I got that. I got that analogy in there. I, I love it. They're at the top of the stretch. Michelle's hybrid fashion is on the outside, coming for the lead. Oh, let's get politics now. Uh, Senate Democrats pumped the brakes on the new stimulus checks. So, um, you know, people have asked, I think our friend uh, Project Russell uh, has asked, when are we going to get more stimulus checks out there in the economy? And uh, Democrats in the Senate have actually put the brakes on it, surprising their House counterparts. And really, they're looking for more data. And quite honestly, you're never, you're never going to have enough data. By the time you have the data on what everything is or isn't working, um, with this, the money the government's posting, it's too late. So it's more important in the short run to continue juicing the economy, especially as we head into the elections. Um, you know, we need another push of things um, because everything's going to stop and be very political. So... Um, I, I continue to advocate that they continue to do this. No, it's not perfect. Um, legislation rarely is. Good legislation rarely is perfect. It takes years. It's certainly not perfect when it's put out in weeks, what they have done, days and weeks. Um, but the, effect, the long-term effects on the American economy and its recovery are contingent on that money uh, being out there um, and keeping things moving. So I am, uh, I am hopeful for that. Um, I know this will not shock you, but um, the PPP handed out virus aid to small business owners more than once. I know that is shocking, shocking news that, that the PPP may have gotten um, to more people, more to people more than once. Um, it, it is it is shocking news, but uh, it has happened. Um, some people have voluntarily given the money back. Others will will give it back. Um, they can face um, uh, prosecution for it uh, for getting it more than once if they don't uh, willingly uh, give that back. Um, so. Uh, there, there is that, um, and and most business owners are inherently honest. So I think most business owners will do the right thing with it. That got it twice. That applied for two places, and through a technical glitch, did get it twice. Um, but uh, that did happen. It's the news media is making more of it than I think they need to. Um, again, anything that happens this fast, there's bound to be mistakes with. Um, but. Uh, you know, that, that did happen. So if you hear that in the news, that is the reality of it. Um, okay, so I guess that brings us to the PPP and what's happening with it. So essentially, with some minor administrative tweaks, the House bill is going to pass, okay? It, it, I, I've heard reports that it has passed I, as, as I came on the air. I, I don't have, before I came on the air, I do not have official word from any of my government contacts that it's a done deal. It is extremely close, and they're going to pass it based on the House bill um, with an administrative sign-off to the, to the clarifications the Senate is asking for. The biggest clarification the Senate is asking for is that the program actually end giving new loans as of June 30th. That's the biggest administrative thing that they want clarified as an administrative note in the overall bill. They can't change the bill, okay, without having to go back and go with the committee. Well, the House is not in session for the rest of the month. So they basically need an administrative way to handle the changes that are being fought for in the Senate and uh, but but the House bill looks like it will become law uh, this week, and that'll take things out to 24 weeks, gives you 24 weeks to spend it, gives you uh, drops the percentages down to 60% for payroll, 
okay, and um, and give some other uh, real relief to FTEs and hitting those numbers. So th those uh, things basically become a uh, a non-issue for almost everybody. So um, that's what looks like the bill. I expect to have full details tomorrow on that. And so, it, you know, don't count it as passed until Trump signs it. But that is what I expect to have happen um, because the only way to do it and get it done this week is to approve the House bill. Um, and nobody wants to go home this week and say that they didn't... Uh, make a change. No rent abatement, but you can spend now 40% on uh, rent, or 35% using my math, okay, and, um, and, and get that. Yes, lots of people, Lindsay, are still waiting on the idle. The idle is moving slow. It's moving in the 50 to 60 day range from application. It is what it has slowed down to, but it is coming. I had several people yesterday, today, um, that have gotten their idle. Okay, so it is coming along. It is just uh, moving like the turtle that I saw on my street today, slowly. Okay, moving slowly across the street. But what would be better for the PPP is what the big banks are calling for. The big banks have gone postal what they want for the PPP. The big banks want blanket forgiveness of PPP loans under $150,000. Okay, the bank's largest lobbying organizations ask, are asking Congress to automatically forgive small business loans of less than $150,000 that are made under the PPP. Okay, why are they asking for this? It's all about numbers. Um, the, While only if they did loans under, under, Dana likes that, if they did loans under $150,000, 26% of, of all PPP loan dollars would qualify for automatic forgiveness. Well, that sounds good. You know, one in four, basically, would qualify for forgiveness. But here's the real kicker, and this is why the bankers want it. While only 26% of loan dollars would qualify for, under this for automatic forgiveness, 85% of all PPP loans would benefit. 85% of the loans are $150,000 or less and would qualify for the forgiveness uh, under this plan that the bankers and others are putting forward. Okay, it can't happen... Joanne, I'll follow up with you. I'll, I'll call you, but but it looks like under this, it's not going to matter. It looks like you're going to win out under this. It's a, it, it looks like most people's uh, PPP concerns under the, the House bill and concerns around FTEs and such will go away under the House bill. If, if, that, if everything passes as the House bill was written, it looks like most people's concerns uh, regarding FTEs would go away. Because ultimately, the, one of the things the House bill allows for is that you don't have to return your FTEs or hours, okay? You can't reduce wages, so you can't reduce their pay rate. But if business conditions didn't warrant them coming back, um, you do not have to worry about it, is the, is the short version. If you're, if you're raking in more money than you ever were before, then that's a different situation. But under most situations, uh, the whole FTE formula goes out the window and, and becomes a non-issue. So uh, that is huge. Yeah, so I, I think there's going to be a lot of good coming for most people with, with, the, with this. Um, but the, uh, if the banks get their way, that would be even better. If the banks get their way. 85% of all PPPs uh, would get automatically forgiven yes there would be there would still be a fraud provision with that and things but uh it would really um be huge our bank did i print it i don't think i printed it 
try to keep all my notes organized. Um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of information people have been getting the last couple of days because accountants and uh, payroll providers are starting to look at charging for PPP paperwork like it was the end of year paperwork or tax paperwork, like they would for tax prep if it's your accountant's office or your end of year payroll paperwork that they provide um, is what these services are going to charge you. Um, a lot of the uh, different providers are looking at. And um, it's a lot of work, so I get it, okay? I get it, you know, you, people need the help to uh, do this. So um, that is important and, and they deserve to get compensated as well. And a lot of them have really been hurting during this. I know a lot of accountants uh, and bookkeepers and, and even payroll providers that have reached out to me that I have worked with uh, f to help them have really been hurting because of the pandemic. Their clients have shut down. All their bookkeeping jobs have left them, um, uh, you know, as they suspended their business. So their normal income from all those things. So they need to make some money too. So it, it's not that they're trying to put the screws to anybody. It's just this takes a lot of time and costs money. So, um, and they deserve, just like everybody else deserves to be compensated for their work. So that I will have further updates on tomorrow. Um, once I have full uh, uh, confirmation from my folks in government on uh, what's headed to the president's desk, but that is what I'm expecting to head there is the House bill um, in, in its entirety, but I will uh, have that for you as soon as it is 100% uh, official. Nebraska Angie's in the house. Nebraska Angie is in the house. Great to have you joining us, Nebraska Angie. Um, so that is sort of your, is Nana okay? She is, Nana thought, you want, you want our Nana funny for the day, Kelly? So, you know, part of the whole COVID thing is who they'll let into surgery and everything else and all that. And, and I, I was a good patient. I didn't force my way. I didn't, I didn't push my way in, but you know, she convinced the doctors that she would be fine just on Tylenol. Funny for her to wake up at uh, 3 a.m. and not feel like the Tylenol was working anymore. So, um, you know, then I had to get with the doctors and uh, today and we had to get uh, the pills and the trips to CVS and everything else. So she is doing much better now that she is properly medicated, um, which is mostly a day, today, tomorrow thing. The surgeon is like super impressed with himself. He couldn't reach around to pat himself on the back enough to say, uh, you know, how much better the surgery went than he could have even uh, uh, do it. But uh, we will get there. We will get there. Uh, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow is another day. He said the doctor, the surgeon said today and tomorrow will be her tough days. And, and then she'll be uh, rapidly on her way to recovery. So, and uh, we've got a lot going on here tomorrow. We've got our contractor Val coming. And she's a hot ticket, our, our contractor Val doing some uh home improvements around the house, and um, we've got the whole QVC HSN thing, but you know what else we got? I'll be back here tomorrow night, tomorrow night, live, live at 8 o'clock Eastern. I will be back here as long as the Facebook gods work with us tomorrow night. I will be back here live tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. I was really re ready at 8 o'clock tonight, too. Uh, probably 8.02, Rebecca would tell you, but I was ready. Thank you, Jerry. But I am here every night live, live in the NARTS private Facebook group at 8-ish. These videos and all the resources that I talk about, go over to NARTS.org slash resale strong. NARTS.org slash resale strong. They're there the next day, the next day at 8 o'clock at night. Uh, no, excuse me, at noon. They're there the next day at noon for you to share with everybody. Uh, Everybody it'll be shared with, okay? Everybody share it with all your business friends so we can help every business in America get to the other side of this. That's what's so important. And our Canadian friends. We got friends in Canada too. We'll get them to the other side too. 
although their government's making it a whole lot easier. I spend my days in between other things calling you back, answering your questions about your business and how you're going to get to the other side of this. That's how I spend my day. I answer your calls and questions by emailing me. You email me, neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. Be sure to include your phone number, and I will call you back. I am a little behind, but I will call you back. Lindsay, I am on QVC tomorrow at noon Eastern and 9 Eastern, and I'm on HSN tomorrow at 1.55 and 10.55 p.m. tomorrow um, for, for that which I'm excited about. But we're also keeping keep an eye on the NARTS page there also for our Resale Reunites conference. It is coming. That virtual conference is coming. Only $199. $199 to register for that. It's going to be great. The registration page should be up any day now. Dell's getting on it. She said it to be up in no time. Hey, Heidi, I'm glad to be here for you. And we start every day and night, every day and night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book. For those of you that were not here at the top of the program, our Good Morning, Good Night book today was, Good Morning, Inertia is a Hell of a Drug. If you've been going nonstop, be an object at rest. If you've been at rest too long, get in motion. Don't rely on an external force. Kick inertia in the grundo. Let's go. Our good night tonight from the Good Morning, Good Night book. Good night. Inertia's a hell of a drug. If you've been going nonstop, be an object at rest. If you've been at rest too long, get in motion. You decide your momentum, love. Yes, that is our good morning, good night. That is how we end the night every night. I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party. I do like a bar mitzvah. I'll be back here in the Narts private Facebook group tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern. 8 o'clock Eastern live. You'll find all the resources at narts.org slash resale strong. But remember, more than anything, you and you, but especially you, are not alone running this store. I'll see you all tomorrow night, everybody. Have a great night.